So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use OSX and iOS's easiest method for storing data between sessions that your uh, app is closed. And uh, that method's called NS user defaults. This is a set of functions that are built into iOS and OSX that lets you store and receive values identified by a key. Usually you can do this in just one line of code, but for this video, I'm going to split it into two lines of code, a constant that you can reuse and the um, line that you ever use to set that value or retrieve it. Throughout this video, I'm going to be including cards that are linked to posts that include uh, useful reference information, code snippets that you can just copy and paste into Xcode, and of course the reference docs. So let's get started. First, I'm going to create just a single page application as per usual, and we'll call this defaults. So the first thing I'm going to do is declare a constant that we can use over and over again to either retrieve our values out of NS user defaults or set our values in there. So, to of course set a constant, you let let, and we're going to call it defaults. So, we start typing NS user defaults and standard user defaults. So, now that we have our constant for working with NS user defaults, we need to set information first before we, of course, can receive it. So if we look here, we have a list of functions for setting information into NSU's defaults. So you can set, you can set a Boolean, integer, float, double, or a NS array. All these functions do as they say on the tin, setting the, well, of course, variable type that is in their name, except for the set object. A set object can either set a string or an NS date. Now, the reason that this is done is because of how NS defaults are stored on the iOS or OS X device. They're stored in plist or property list files. You don't need to worry about how this works, just remember this list. So back in our application, we're gonna act add a we're gonna add a uh, label label text field and a button. and outlets for each of these. So the first thing we need to do is of course set. So, and a action for this. So let's set the string from our text field into an NS use of default called our string. So, defaults dot set dot set object and we just put in our label uh, sorry text field dot text so that's the text from our text field and we need to assign it a key so this has to be unique within your application and is used both to set your objects write over your objects and of course receive your objects back later so we're just going to call this our string So now that we have our string set, so now that we know how to set a string, it's also important that we know how to get one back. So of course, there's a separate set of functions for that. This is a set of functions for retrieving values back from NSU's default. As you can see, most of them do what they do, do what they say on the tin. And there's ones like string for key, which makes sure, make sure the object that you'll run pulling out if there is a string if you set it as an object. Let's add a second button, which we can use to load our string. So let's just link that to here. Change that to an action. And now we need to get that string out. So let our string equal defaults. Defaults dot. You can either use object for key or string for key. In this case, I'm just going to use string for key. And the the key is our string. And then we just need to set our label. Then we just have to set our label text as our string. 
So let's run our project and see how that works. Let's see if this works. So we're going to set something in here. We're going to set that in there, and then we're going to get it back. So as you can see, our um, text field hasn't expanded to the size, but it's gotten our values out of NS user defaults. So that's how you set and receive NS user defaults just regularly in a single iOS app. But something else you can do is use something called app groups to share your NS user defaults between your regular iOS app and an extension for something like WatchKit or a, or a Today widget. I'm going to create another video where I explain how you can do that.